You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. We straight gangsters over here, Drake man. Gangsters. Uh. 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 Yeah. Good morning and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every weekday. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. Who, me? And the man on the other microphone, he is a great patriot. We know him as America, America. Yeah, it's your boy Chris America coming to you live this Tuesday, February the 5th, 2019. I had to double think again, Loudbeard. It's a little bit early. Still haven't had enough caffeine yet, but Tuesday after the Super Bowl means one thing and one thing only, Loudbeard. It means we turned the page on the NFL football season. We spent all Monday talking about the Super Bowl and everything else, and now we officially turn the page. We look towards the draft. We look towards free agency, and we look towards the... Ooh, burped again in the microphone. We look towards the next season. But, Loudbeard, before we get to all that, I also want to talk about this. Do you hear this sound, Loudbeard? I hear Loudbeard, it. that is the it. sound of the NBA trade deadline talk clock ticking down, Loudbeard. It is winding down, and I want to get into the astronomical size reward the Pelicans are looking for from the Lakers. So much to talk about, Loudbeard. What, what do you got on the slate? Well, this is, story is unfolding in many different directions. Uh, it looks like Anthony Davis has come out. And he has now dwindled his list. Well, I guess he's made it a little bit bigger. It was just the Lakers. He's added the Clippers and the Milwaukee Bucks onto his list. One team he has not added was the Boston Celtics. But Anthony Davis is trying to help these other teams out and saying, these are the teams that I'd be interested in. But the Pelicans, man, they are not going for all of this. They're really hesitant to deal this guy at the trade deadline. And personally, I don't understand that thought process. A guy that doesn't want to be on your team, why make him just muscle through this end of the season so that you can just start these negotiations over with? Cut ties now. Start building your team now. But you're right, Chris America. The Pelicans, their front office, they're not sure if they want to trade him or not right now at the deadline, so they're starting to get a little arrogant. They're starting to get a little cocky. And what they're doing is saying, you know what? We want this King's Ransom of four first-round draft picks and some second-round draft picks. We want it all. You better give us your best offer. And right now, I think the Lakers are sitting there thinking, we're giving you some good offers here. You need to look at these offers that we're giving you. But the Pelicans, man, they're they're really pushing back. They're, they're asking for the world, aren't they, Chris America? They're asking for the world and the rest of the solar system, Loudbeard. And you know what? I kind of like it. I really do. Only because it's the Lakers, and I'm tired of so many times NBA teams just hand over their superstars to the L.A. Lakers. They either hand them over through free agency or they hand them over through just dumb trades. We even tried to hand over the New Orleans Pelicans, tried to hand over the uh, Chris Paul way back in the day, but the NBA owned the team back then, and they nixed that idea. So luckily the NBA got involved in that, but... I'm just glad to finally see nobody, somebody who just doesn't bow down to the Lakers. And I kind of like it. But at the same time, Pelicans, what are you doing? Yeah, eventually you got to take an offer. Now, they might be just sitting on this because they do have two days left. Thursday afternoon is going to be the trade deadline where it finalizes. I believe it's at 4 p.m. on Thursday. And the Lakers reportedly sweeten the pot. And they made a monster offer, and they said, 
Pelicans basically take our whole team except for LeBron. The new offer that they have is Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Lance Stevenson, Rajon Rondo, and Michael Beasley for Anthony Davis and Solomon Hill, who is on a bad contract for the Pelicans, which the Lakers are willing to take that bad contract back. So they're basically teeing it up with the entire young core and the old guys. They, they threw in everything they could. The Lakers said, here you go. Here's the kitchen sink. We're throwing it at you. The ball is in your court. And the Pelicans, I mean, it might be a good time to pull the trigger. You're getting a lot of assets for Anthony Davis, a guy that doesn't want to be on your team. But they're just they're sitting there. They're balking at the idea. Yeah, and how do you how do you see this ending, Loudbeard? I also saw a Woj bomb that said that the Celtics are telling them, please just hold off until you know the off season. We have a package ready for you to go that we think you'd like. And now Woj didn't say what that package was, but I'd have to assume that if the Celtics want the Pelicans to hold on to him after the trade deadline they'd have to tell them what that package is. You can't just say, like, oh, yeah, I got something good for you, wink, wink, and then you're expecting a team to hold on when they got the Lakers offering the world that you just told them. So I don't know, man. I don't know that the Celtics have anything better than what the Lakers are offering. How do you see this ending, Loudbeard? It just depends on how the Pelicans feel about the players on that Celtics roster. It really depends on that because if the Pelicans feel like they can get more value out of the Celtics, whatever this package that they put together actually is, then they would wait. But And there's still going to be competition then. So at the end of the season, even if it at that point it will only be one year left of Anthony Davis, there's going to be all these teams throwing packages at the Pelicans. But if they specifically want the Celtics deal, they may wait. Now, I personally, my gut feeling is you got to move the guy. You got to move him. You got to move him before this trade deadline. And right now, they're just waiting to see if anything better comes in. But I do think that Anthony Davis will be on the Lakers by Thursday at 4 o'clock. That's how I think this whole thing's going to unravel. Now, with you saying that Woj bomb about the Celtics putting pressure, I saw that also. And. Yeah, the Celtics are putting on pressure because they can't offer anything right now, and they do have some young talent. Now, if I was the Pelicans GM, I would evaluate which players I'm getting. Now, with the Lakers, you're getting Ball and and Kuzma and Ingram, and those guys are young and good. But Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum may be a little bit better on the young side than those guys, and then if they can throw in a kicker, um, another really good player. Heck, they might even throw Gordon Hayward in. Who knows? You just... Don't know what that's going to be if the Pelicans want that sort of player in the deal. So as a GM, the Pelicans, this is a tough decision. This is a super tough decision, but I would say that in my gut feeling, Anthony Davis will be a Laker by Thursday at 4 o'clock. Mm, I like that prediction, Loudbeard. And I think I think you might be right. I think they're going to come to some sort of compromise here. And... Do you would you think the Pelicans would be a better team with that young core being there? Maybe not this year, but but down the road. If if anything, you got to think that that young core comes in to your team with a chip on their shoulder, thinking, "Man, we were on the Lakers. We had this good thing going. We were supposed to be the future." Magic Johnson filled our heads with all of this whole "we're the team" and everything, and then LeBron comes in, which we understand. But now it's like. Oh, move aside, young young guns. Uh, we don't need you anymore. I, I kind of want those guys on my team, right? Am, am I all wrong on that? No, you're not wrong on that. You you want some somebody with a little bit of fire in their belly. But the problem with that, Chris America, is the guy that was silenced by LeBron's giant shadow, he has come out, and he's already starting to throw shots at the Pelicans. That's right. Your man LeVar Ball is back. Oh, he woke up, huh? He's like, he oh, well, my, my son's already traded, so <laughs> I don't got to listen to those jokers and Magic Johnson and LeBron James. They can't tell me what to do no more. Yeah, and he he's back. He's he's kind of gotten out of his little slumber. He's what We woke up the sleeping giant, and he's coming out, and he's saying, you know, we want to be in L.A. And when he says we, he means Lonzo because that's the cash cow, right? So he's like, we want to be in L.A., and if we don't go to L.A., we do not want to go to New Orleans. 
you can somehow get the, the Suns involved. We like Arizona. Phoenix is a nice place. We can live there. Um, yeah, so the Suns need to be involved with this trade. So he's coming out on ESPN and uh, ESPN Radio and saying this. So LeVar is back, and I think he is going to be disruptive. Now, if you're the New Orleans Pelicans and you hear that and you know what LeVar Ball brings and you know that disruption, does that maybe sour the deal a little bit? Are you thinking, man, we don't want this drama with Lonzo. We already got Drew Holiday, who's a, a really great point guard. Do we need Lonzo to be in this mix also? Well, I thought that was kind of the deal with the trade anyways, is that they wanted a three-team trade. I mean, we already knew that Lonzo's camp didn't want him going to New Orleans because of Drew Holiday. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they trade for him now and then see what they can get for him down the road, like in the off season. Do you hold on to that asset for, for 30 games? I mean, you're already tanking. Maybe that helps you tank even more so you can get a high high pick to add to this young core and then maybe you trade Lonzo in a deal during the draft or you trade him you know sometime during the offseason to get that thing going so I, I feel like if you're getting the world from the Lakers you take on LeVar and Lonzo I, I do I think you got to take that on for as long as you can and then you ship them out again if you can't get a third team involved before the deadline all right I'm gonna give you the exact quotes from LeVar he says we want to be in LA but if he's traded, I don't want Lonzo in New Orleans. Phoenix is the best fit for him, and I am going to speak it into existence. And, of course, LeVar also takes credit for speaking into existence the Lakers drafting Lonzo back when he was drafted in of 2017. He yeah, it, it's him. He He's making it happen. And if he says he did it once, he says he can do it again. He is going to make it make Lonzo go to Phoenix. That's the best fit for him, which to me is a little silly because Phoenix really isn't that good right now, but they have some really good young talent between Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. But I could see, I could see the, I can, I guess kind of understand what he's going for with this. So I have to ask you something, Loudbeard. If, if you're the Pelicans and you're looking at first round picks from the Lakers, you kind of want them to be three or four seasons from now, don't you? Because you don't want them while LeBron and AD are there. Those are useless picks when they're going to be, you know, 25th through 30, somewhere in that range. You kind of want them when they're like, okay, we want it when we know LeBron is old and tired and AD is kind of, you know, winding down his career or maybe he's a little disgruntled because LeBron isn't there to carry him anymore and the Lakers are doing kind of bad. That's when you want their first round picks. Are you? Do you think you're able to say, no, 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 we don't want next year's first round. We don't even want the year after that. Give us like... Three or four seasons down the road from now. Chris America, thank you for bringing this up. This is something I'm very passionate about because the draft to me is is just such a crapshoot. And when you're getting draft picks and you're piling them up, a lot of times they don't materialize into anything. And for example, you're getting a guy like Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram. These are like top five draft picks that were in the NBA draft lottery the last couple years. So you're getting guys that you would be that are probably better than what you're going to get in in a in a pick because the Lakers are going to be good assuming that LeBron stays out his whole contract which we do have no reason to assume that yes, you would want to have what 4 5 6 7 years down the road. But when you look at the his, draft historically, you don't get a lot of talent out of the draft. There's usually three or four guys that come out of the draft each year. A lot of times it's the number one draft pick, maybe the second or third draft pick. One guy in the teens ends up working out. It's usually some you get lucky and you, you hit on one guy. The rest of them all end up being busts. You may every couple years there's a second round guy that ends up coming out and being a, a decent player. A guy like a Draymond was a late draft pick that – ended up being an all-star, which was great. But you don't see that very often. That's why, to me, the draft is is just getting these draft picks isn't as valuable as getting the actual players. Most of the teams that we see in the NBA today, their big superstars weren't on their team. They didn't draft those superstars because what happens is, is even if you draft the next Anthony Davis, he becomes what he is now, which is he never takes his team to a championship he may get one or two playoff games, and then he wants to get traded to another team with other superstars so he can take them. That's what LeBron did in Cleveland. He couldn't win a championship. He goes to Miami, teams up with the other superstars to win a championship. 
Dwight Howard in Orlando got tired of being here, left. Shaq, left. Those are the Orlando examples, but it's everywhere. Carmelo goes to the Nuggets, gets traded to the Knicks, wants to force himself out of there. All these big-time superstars, they don't stay with their original team. To me, building through the draft is so hard. Even Oklahoma City, they were so great when they drafted KD, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook three years consecutively. Only one of those superstars is still on that team. KD forced himself out. Harden got traded, which was a bad trade. And these teams just don't keep those superstars. To me, I'd rather take the players than take the big the the draft, the four years worth of first round picks. Because to me, their value is it, maybe you got a ten percent chance of hitting on one or two of those picks. And even if you do, you don't even know if they're going to stay with your team. I, to me, the draft is overrated for the NBA. Yeah, it it definitely is when. You know, Kobe and Steph Curry and those guys, they turn into big name players outside of the top five lottery picks. And then you got guys like, I don't know, where's Andrew Wiggins been? What's John Wall doing for the Wizards? What's Bradley Beal been doing? What's Aaron Gordon been doing for the Magic? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there have been good hits. You know, you have your Kyrie Irvings, you have your LeBron James, you have um, who's another, you know, top three pick that did well? KD, Westbrook, those guys that you mentioned. But it is a crapshoot, man. Yeah, but they don't even stay on their teams. That's the other problem. Well, yeah, just... but a team like New Orleans, team like Magic, team like the Milwaukee Bucks, that's kind of how we have to do it. We have to draft these players, and then we have to hope that once they're here, they just feel the love and, and want to stay where they're at and don't want to move because it's even harder to do to get a free agent to come to these teams than it is to draft a player – hope that he makes it well, becomes an all-star, and wants to stay. You know what you need is like a Dirk Nowitzki. Eh, I messed Dirk that Nowitzki? up. Dirk Nowitzki? Yes. Uh, you need Dirk, man. That guy is is perfect. He was a little bit of a later draft pick. He wasn't the top three. You, you got him a little bit later in the draft. And when you pick him for the Dallas Mavericks, he stays with the Mavericks his entire career. He's an all-star, perennial, perennial all-star and he wins a championship for your team. Even though it was only one, that was a great championship for the Mavericks. That guy's the perfect pick. If the Mavericks could do it all over again, they would pick him a thousand times out of a thousand times. You don't go anywhere different. But all of these other guys that get drafted, they all end up wanting to move on, or or they end up being a bust. I mean, it's just so challenging for these smaller markets. And, you know, it's kind of sad to see. You see these smaller markets, and a lot of times the superstars, even when there is these big giant trades, they make these lists. Anthony Davis makes a list. Oh, I only want to go. Now, Milwaukee, small market because of Giannis, yes. Anybody wants to play with that guy. And the Bucks did great by drafting him. But L.A. and is his other list. You know, everybody wants to go to New York and L.A. These small market teams, man, they're suffering. And it's hard. It's, there's no real fix to it. It's going to continue to happen. It's going to always happen. But it is what it is, and they, they just got to keep battling. And New Orleans has to stand up for itself and say, we're going to do whatever we can to put ourselves in that best position. Now, if that GM disagrees with me and thinks that draft picks are more valuable than, than Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma, or maybe, and I didn't even look at it, but maybe he wants everything. Maybe he wants all of the players and four first-round picks. Now, if that's the case, if Magic's willing to do it over in L.A., go for it. Take everything you can. Make this the most valuable trade that you possibly can so that you can get something out of it and still be relevant. So I hope that the Pelicans don't screw this up. I hope they don't either. I was kind of thinking, you brought up Giannis and you brought up Dirk and how they are willing to stay. Now, Dallas is not a small market. That is a huge city. But it's not the glitz and glamour market like L.A. and and New York. But I got to wonder if it's because they grew up in Europe and, and in foreign countries that they didn't get the whole glitz and glamour of L.A. growing up. They didn't get to see Shaq do rap albums and have all that stuff and, and everything. That they were like, you know what? I just wanted to come to the United States to play NBA basketball. I'm on an NBA team. The city is good to me. It kind of reminds me of home in a lot of ways because I grew up in this small town, and I'm good. I'm good to stay here, where guys like Dwight Howard and, and you know, AD and LeBron and all these other guys, they grew up seeing the glitz and glamour of L.A. and, 
and all the stardom that comes with that, along with being on the Lakers and the NBA talent and everything. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with why guys like Giannis and Dirk are like, you know what, I'm, I'm good to say in my you know, non-traditional small market or big market, but just non-traditional glitz and glamour type city. Oh, that's a great point. I, I kind of look back at the San Antonio Spurs. We talk about them being a dynasty yeah. over such a long period of time. That dynasty was built off of three international players, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. And those guys were loyal to their teams. They stuck with it all the way through. Now, Tony's on a different team now, but that was just because he aged out a little bit and the team just needed to turn over and was rebuilding. But, you know, when you look at Manu and Tony Parker and Tim Duncan, I mean, those guys were extremely loyal. loyal. And San Antonio's, I mean, it's still, that's a smaller market, especially when you look at it for the NBA. And there was a ton of loyalty there. And I have to appreciate that. I wish there was a little bit more loyalty in the NBA nowadays. Now, I love the trade deadline because we can talk about it all day long. I could talk about it for hours, Chris America, because there's so many rumors and so much speculation and who's going where and who's going to get the best deal and how are we going to make our team better. But the NBA was better when teams seemed like they stuck or players seemed like they stuck around a little bit longer. I, I do like that loyalty. And what you're saying about the glitz and glamour, we are. We have a very small attention span. We're, we're starting to get that way more and more now with the technology and the way the society has changed. And we are. We have this very small attention span. And a guy like AD who's grown up in that, he, he has a small attention span. And he's like, you know what? I've given Pelican seven years of my life. I'm ready to move on. I need to go somewhere else. I need something new. I need something different. I need something fun. I need something flashy. And when he's thinking all these things, he can do that. He has nothing stopping him. Nothing's preventing him from leaving. There's no code of conduct in the NBA where it's like, or unwritten law in the NBA where it's like, oh, you have to be loyal to your team. That's been thrown out the window years ago. Nobody's loyal anymore. So these guys can push their way out, bully their way out, and do whatever they want because they're the superstars. They can get coaches fired. They can get other players traded. When you're a superstar in the NBA, you could basically do whatever you want, and there is no repercussions. No, there's not, and it's because it's a player-driven league, and owners know this. They have to admit this. Um, you know, as good as Eric Spolstra, Steve Kerr, and Tyron Lue are, those I mean, those are your last three coaches to win an NBA title, and and Greg Popovich. I mean, Greg, Greg is kind of on his own own platform, but as good as those coaches are, they're not winning championships without Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, LeBron James, uh, Tim Duncan, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving. Chris or uh, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, like none of those coaches are winning titles without those people on their roster. It's just, I mean, look, this is the first time that Pop hasn't had true superstar on his team, and it's going to be the first time in 19 years he's not going to be able to get 50 wins. So, whether coaches and fans and owners like it, the NBA, for whatever reason, is a player driven league where if you don't have the a, a super talented team, then you're not going to win a title. I think, what, 2004, the Detroit Pistons is probably the last true team that without any superstar talent to win a title over a much more talented team like the Lakers. It, the only other team I can think of is maybe the 2011 Mavericks. Yeah, and, I mean, the argument there would be Dirk is a superstar. We right. all know who Dirk is. He He's up there head and shoulders above a lot yeah. of the other players in the NBA. And honestly, on the Detroit Pistons team, yeah, we would say that was more of a team effort, but you had Rashad, Rashard Wallace, Ben Wallace, Chauncey Billups. Billups was kind of the, the biggest name on that team. So there was names on there. You're not going to do it without some sort of talent. Now, those guys were all-star type guys, but not necessarily in that top five NBA superstar realm. Right. It's not that LeBron James led or Kevin Durant or Steph Curry. Or even those guys Giannis. are Yeah, these guys are on another planet. Absolutely another planet. And you're right that since then the Detroit Pistons are kind of that that team that everybody looks at. Well, you can do it without superstars. Well, that was 2004 and how has everybody else done without superstars since 2004? Chris America, how have they done? Well, let's see. Tim Duncan's won a few. Uh, we had a big three in the in the Boston Celtics that carried Doc Rivers to his only title. Um, you mentioned Dirk being on the Mavericks. We've had LeBron James carrying coaches to the NBA Finals in the East for the last eight years. 
uh, yeah, we have LeBron James that, when he was healthy, made Luke Walton and the lottery pick Lakers turn in, them into a fourth or fifth seed at the time before he got injured. Yeah, that That's how it's worked out for everybody else, trying to win without superstars. Absolutely. And that's that's where the league is. And these superstars can do basically whatever they want. And that's where Anthony Davis is right now. He says, you know, there's no rules. I control this. Your contract doesn't mean anything to me because I'll force my way out. Now, the Pelicans can say, okay, we got to legally, you got to stick to this contract. We'll make you play it out. But they want to get value for it. So now they're in an awkward position. Do we let a, a superstar walk away and not get any value, or do we trade them as soon as we possibly can trade them so that we can get some assets in return? And that's what they need to do. And that's why, to me, this trade deadline screams that Anthony Davis will be gone because they don't want this to linger. Anytime a superstar lingers, and we had this happen with Dwight Howard locally, so we were very intimate with this situation, but when Dwight Howard decided to stay the year prior to him getting traded, it just wasn't the same. You could tell the turmoil, and then that off season there was a bunch of drama, and then going into the next season, it was a bunch of drama. Finally, they traded him at the trade deadline to Los Angeles, and it, it really wreaked havoc, havoc on the entire team. Stan Van Gundy, who was... A, a pretty respected coach in the NBA was just completely run all over and then lost his job because of Dwight Howard. The whole thing was a mess, and the New, New Orleans Pelicans don't need all that drama. Okay, you're a superstar. You want to get out of here? All right, we're going we're gonna to listen to offers. We're going to take the best offer, and we're going to move on, and everything's going to be just fine. Yeah, and, and it just sucks for the rest of the team and the, and the coaches on the Pelicans too, right? You're, you're kind of with this teammate or you have this player that you're trying to coach and he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be on your team. He doesn't he doesn't think you're good enough for him to be his teammate. And that's got to cause some dissension in the locker room. Now I know some guys are mature enough to say this is just a business and I get it and they look at it more as like a employee relationship, uh, you know, a coworker relationship, but not everybody views the world that way. Not everybody has that mentality to look at him like that. They look at him like they're still on the high school basketball team and you're my teammate and we're supposed to be a brotherhood and we're supposed to be here for each other and you don't want that. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, clock's ticking, though, Loudbeard, as we heard at the beginning of the show. Yeah, that clock is ticking. It's it's doomsday right now for the NBA trade deadline. Uh, th what I like about it, though, is between today and tomorrow and even Thursday morning, we're going to see news flying around left and right. And I know a lot of it right now is revolving around Anthony Davis. There's going to be at least one other big trade that catches you off guard. Um, we haven't even talked that much about the Grizzlies' assets. Conley and Marcus all up on the trade dead, or on the trade block. I've heard some rumors there, but I, I feel like one of those guys, if not both of them, will be moved by the trade deadline. So I'm hoping to see some fireworks this, this trade deadline. It, it seems like the NBA trade deadline is one of the ones that doesn't usually disappoint. There's always one or two big blockbuster ones, similar to that Kristaps Porzingis trade that I was not even expecting, and then all of a sudden it just it cold-cocked us. And we were all yeah. of a sudden knocked out with, wow, the unicorn getting traded out of New York. So that's what's going to happen this week. This is what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be a lot of fun, Chris America, and... I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the NBA to bring it because the NBA brings the drama better than any other league, in my opinion. Now, the NFL does a pretty good job about being year-round. They have their draft coming up, and they have free agency after the draft, or I'm sorry, before the draft, and they have a lot going on. But for some reason, it's the NBA that just seems like they've got these storylines going all year round, and it does. The, the drama makes it interesting to watch. It's must-see TV because of all this NBA side drama. It's not even the games that make it interesting. It's all the players and all their shenanigans. Yeah, and you mentioned how the Grizzlies want to move on Conley and, and Gasol. Man, think about the, how Pelicans not moving from AD yet has caused them, caused the Memphis Grizz, Grizzlies to kind of have to wait and see what's going to happen because other teams, other teams who might want to trade for those guys are like, yeah, we want those guys, but we really want AD. And we don't want to trade away assets to get your guys Conley and, and Gasol if, if we have a chance to get AD. And so it kind of creates this vacuum where other teams have to sort of wait out this AD thing in order for them to make a right move for them. 
you know, like the Bucks, they've been wanting to trade Thon Maker, but I feel like they're kind of holding on to him to try to maybe see if they can work something out with the Pelicans. They don't want to send Thon Maker to the uh, the, the Grizzlies only to have the Pelicans come around and pick up the phone and say, "Hey, we we still we still good with that deal?" And you're like, uh, "No, we we kind of just traded with the Memphis Grizzlies. Damn it, we we missed out." <laughs> Yeah, and that's what happens. I mean, the whole thing's gridlocked right now. We need this Anthony Davis thing to happen, or we need them to just call it a day and say, okay, we're going to wait till next year. That way, the rest of the trade world can get their action going. Well, well Loudbeard, America, it's, uh, it's, it's hard being a GM. It's hard being a GM to make these kind of decisions. But on the other side of the break, Loudbeard, I'm going to give you some easier decisions and some thinker or stinkers on this, uh, this uh, Murray Murray guy, Kyler Murray. I wanted to call him DeMarco Murray, but I was like, that's not it. Kyler Murray on the other side of the break. And I'll get his name right, too. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12-ounce sports radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Ring Central features all in one phone, messaging, and video conferencing. It's easy to use with unparalleled security. Ring Central simplifies things so you can grow. Call Ring Central to speak with a representative about a price for your growing business at 877 779 3860. Again, that's 877 779 3860. Hey, everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there and God bless America. Welcome back, and we thank you all for listening in. Once again, you are listening to Scout Team Radio. He's Chris America. I'm Loudbeard. We bring it to you hot and live each and every a.m., Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., and replay at 11 on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. You're also listening in if you are in Canada right now, probably on the Barn Burner Network. We're a proud partner of the Barn Burner Network playing the podcast daily on their network also if you don't get a chance to catch the live show we do encourage you to go back listen and download the podcast that's right each and every live show we record drop as a podcast daily you can go back you can subscribe it's on apple podcasts it's on spotify podcasts or anywhere you find a podcast including our website scoutteamradio.com 
Lastly, if you want to get interactive, make sure you hit us up on Twitter. We're available at Scout Team Radio. Tweet at us, and we'll read your tweets live on the air. But with all that being said, Chris America, I think I'm ready. I think I'm about ready for this next segment. This is a Grammy award-winning segment brought to you by the great man over on the other microphone known as Chris America. Yes, Loudbeard. And before we get into that, you mentioned our barn burner family up over there in Canada. I watched the Toronto Maple Leafs last night, Loudbeard, and I'm getting kind of nervous about the Maple Leafs, Loudbeard. As a Lightning fan, these guys have been playing on fire. Um, although they did get their first winning streak in the year 2019, so maybe I shouldn't get too nervous, but they beat our Lightning a few weeks ago or last week, and then they just utterly dominated and crushed the Ducks last night. It was a fun game to watch. They were scoring goal after goal. Um, the Flying V couldn't help the Ducks. They, they tried the quack, 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 quack chant. Still didn't work. Uh, the only thing I think they could have could have helped is if they would have brought Goldberg in as goalie. Oh, Mighty Ducks reference. Hey, to all of our listeners out there, that segment was brought to you by Chris Canada. Thank you, Chris Canada, for <laughs> Chris bringing Canada. us that You're hockey welcome. segment. Uh, that was very nice. Well played, sir. Uh, all right, Loudbeard. Um, let's yes. get out of the the Anthony Davis vacuum. We we spent an entire segment, an entire first half of the show, and uh, let's get back to talking NFL. And over the weekend, during Super Bowl weekend, we had Kyler Murray on the Dan Patrick Show. And Dan, you know, one of the living legends in sports media, one of my favorite guys. Every time he pops up in an Adam Sandler movie, I just chuckle a little bit, no matter what he's doing. I just see Dan Patrick, and I give a little chuckle. But um, he had Kyler Murray on the show, and he wanted to know what everybody else wants to know. Hey, hey man, are you going to the Combine? Are you going to be serious about this NFL future? And here was his response. Uh, are you going to the combine? I don't know. Well, wait, wait, Dad, is he going to the combine? <laughs> no no, Dad had no comment there. Yeah. Pro day? I mean, that's after the combine. Yeah, you're going to do a pro day? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. I guess if you want to say yeah, I guess, yeah, 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 sure. yeah, it's a, it's okay. You can have a pro day, but I instead that of would going, imply that I was going to play football. Uh, okay. So you're gonna have a pro day? <laughs> <laughs> When's minor? When do you report for the Oakland A's? February 15th. Oh, you knew that. Okay. So you're you're ready to go to do that. <laughs> Wait, are you going to spring training? I don't know. Wait, you don't know? <laughs> Dad, is he going to spring training? <laughs> Another no comment here. You know these microphones are on right now. Like we're, yeah, I, yeah know, okay, I know, okay. I know, I <laughs> know. I just, I just said. All right. How tough is it that you're doing this with Gatorade, but you know every place you go is going to ask you the same questions? I'm getting pretty good at answering, you know, these questions. No, so. you're not answering them. Well, ex you're, exactly. You're, you're yeah, shaking yeah. me off here. Yeah, no, yeah, I feel like I'm trying to tackle you. <laughs> no, yeah, everybody keeps asking the same question. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they'll, they'll soon be answered. All right, Loudbeard. That was, uh, that was an awkward interview, to say the least. Yeah, awkward is uh, putting it lightly. All right, so now I want to go in some thinkers and some stinkers on the way people on Twitter reacted to this. All right, you ready wait, for it? Wait, wait, wait. You want to do what? The thinker or the stinker. I'm ready. All right, here's take number one. I've always believed that Kyler Murray is an entertaining athlete, but at the end of the day, or but that he and his father are idiots. If you're any professional franchise, baseball or football, do you really want this sort of guy? Dan Patrick owns him and his father with that with what are usually softballs. Now that's a stinker. Um, you would want this guy on your team because he's a talent. I believe once he makes up his decision, makes up his mind on which team he goes to or which sport he goes to, baseball or football, that he's going to be a dedicated guy and he's going to stick to that team. I he's just got to make that decision. He's got to commit. Yeah, I know it's tough now. 
I'd be a little worried as an NFL GM if I'm drafting him in the top 10 or top 15 of the NFL draft because of that. And that would make me worried as a fan also. If we draft this guy and he ends up going to, the, uh, going to baseball. Now, on baseball, he's already drafted on the athletics. So it doesn't matter if he goes or doesn't go. He's already on a team. I think the NFL is where it's more challenging. So I'm still going to say stinker. This guy has every right to make whatever decision he wants to. He can tell the media what he wants to tell them. And Dan Patrick didn't own him. Dan Patrick's just a talented sports broadcaster that was trying to get information out of a guy that just wasn't ready to give him any information. Now, why he's doing interviews when he's not going to say anything, that's a different story. But I'm going to give that one a stinker. All right, here's another the different side of the perspective. Uh, I love Dan Patrick, but with this interview with Kyler Murray is excruciating to listen to. You got a generational athlete on your show who has made a historical achievement and all you do is try to pry info you know he doesn't want to give. Then got the nerve to wonder why he's not talking. LOL. I'm going to give that one a stinker also, Chris America. This place is stinking it up. Now, yeah. Dan Patrick's getting paid to do things like what he did on air. He's trying to keep the flow going, and then he's also trying to get the tough questions out of a generational athlete or a talent, a generational talent. Yeah, I think Dan Patrick did everything right, and there's nothing wrong with that, so I'm going to give that a stinker. And I think he should have, at that point, maybe asked more questions and kind of changed the subject, but Dan Patrick's smart. He knows that this video and, and this audio is going to go viral. People are going to talk about it. It became talked about. Now Dan Patrick's back in the spotlight because of this interview. So I thought all of it was good. It's all good, man. That take is a stinker. Not, not only that, but the exchange was entertaining to fans. Forget Kyler Murray, man. Like you said, he's trying to put on a show. And it was only a minute and 30 long. So it's not like he spent 10 minutes trying to get this answer out of him. All right, one last one, Loudbeard. Understand why the question is being asked, but dude is making the biggest decision of his life and wants to do it his own way. Man, that is a thinker, Chris America. You led me to the best one. Save that one for last. Saved it for last. Because you Absolutely. know who it was by? This is, huh? You know who this take was by? Is it Skip? Nope. One Patrick LaVon Mahomes the second. Oh, man, Pat Mahomes. That's my boy. Um, jumping on that Pat Mahomes train. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes was right. You just let him do his thing. This is He hasn't been drafted by an NFL team yet. He has zero commitment to any any NFL team. Now, I feel like he has a little bit of a ki commitment to the Oakland Athletics, but in due time, he will make his final decision, and we will see how this whole thing plays out. But we will. it'll come around. It'll come around. Now, Chris America... I I, I want to just ask you a quick question, and maybe I'm I'm crazy, but is are we at the point in the world where we're no longer going to allow a dual sport athlete? Is that just completely out of the question? I mean, when we look at players from the past, like a Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders, they made it work. Now they had to miss some time in in their seasons here and there, but can we do a dual threat? Can we do a two sport athlete? And can Kyle? Kyler Murray be that guy? I think the difference between Kyler Murray and Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson is the position that they play. I don't think there's any place in the world where a quarterback can be a dual uh, sport athlete. And it sucks, but that's just kind of the way it is. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. You're never going to earn the trust of your teammates or your fan base if you're gallivanting around with the Oakland A's, you know, while OTAs are going on, or if you're, you know, hitting home runs or stealing bases when the preseason's going on. Um, everybody wants their quarterback to be completely focused. We see all the time. Now, we haven't really seen it much with Aaron Rodgers, but uh, what was it? When, when Russell Wilson got married to some celebrity and he was doing commercials, Everybody started ragging on him for not being completely focused on the quarterback position. And that's why the Seahawks aren't where they are because, you know, Russell Wilson let the stardom go to his head. And I think you're going to see those complaints if your quarterback is out there pinch running for the Oakland A's while he's supposed to be watching game film. Hmm. 
All right. That that's a good point. And the World Series this past year ended on October 28th. You're pretty deep in the NFL season at October 28th. So that overlap would make it extremely yeah. difficult. And then if you're even the baseball team, do you want your star batter, your star runner, your star outfielder, do you want him out there taking snaps at the quarterback position on October 16th, per se, and you're in the middle of the ALCS? Hmm. Okay, okay. I can see the argument there. I don't know how the players did it in the past. I mean, I, I was around for the Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson days. Um, I, I, I know they, they missed time. let them do it because it was cute. And they weren't really like, I mean, they were star players, but I think even then, towards the end, um, I know at least Bo Jackson, they were kind of like, look, dude, you got to make a choice here. And the injury kind of helped make that choice for him. And then he ended up just playing for the Kansas City Royals. Now, Neon Dion, I don't think he ever became that good of a baseball player for a baseball team to really want to force him to make the decision. And I can't remember, I mean, I, I was a little kid, so I don't really remember what how he was splitting duties you know in September and October because the Atlanta Braves were wasn't he on the Braves yeah he was on the Braves and he was just really mainly just a base runner and a ba- a, a pinch runner and a base dealer wasn't he I mean I don't remember him being like and now starting for the Atlanta Braves game in and game out no I remember him being a field player though I I think he played center field if I remember correctly I I don't know it it was a I mean, while I'm sure ago. he did like to, I'm sure he did play, play a, from time to time, time travel it, Thursday, one of these days, and go back and relive some of these. Uh, but I, I don't think he was out there every day like Derek Jeter or um, Chipper Jones. Like Chipper Jones was probably had far more starts during that season than Deion Sanders did. Yeah. Now, if he committed to the whatever team drafts him in the, in the NFL, um, and then the Athletics said, "All right, well, you can play with us, and we'll work around your NFL schedule, but we want, we still want you on our team." And even if it's like a minor league deal where it ends early and they have him in like triple A and he's working his way, would you be okay with that? Or you think that that shows lack of commitment to the NFL? If I'm a, if I'm a NFL team and I'm making a high draft pick for a quarterback, I don't want him doing anything other than being in the quarterback for my team. I mean, that's, it sounds selfish, but if I'm investing a high draft pick, millions of dollars, and all this other stuff that goes with it, I need you completely focused, especially in your rookie season. Like You need to get caught up on the speed of the NFL. You need to get caught up on our playbook. You need to be focused on everything that is NFL football. Now, if, let's say, Kyler Murray becomes a a superstar and it becomes second nature like it has for Peyton Manning and Drew Brees and Tom Brady, like, like those guys don't need OTAs. Those guys don't need preseason football we saw Tom Brady sit out for four weeks of the NFL season and then came back and won a Super Bowl so maybe if he gets down to that point to where it's like all right Kyler Murray it's on autopilot now for you to be an NFL quarterback then maybe he can go and if you want to go full around with baseball in the offseason have at it player all right so changing gears just slightly with you here if Kyler Murray commits completely to the NFL how early do you think this guy should get drafted? When you look at the size and his skill set, do you think he could be a number one overall pick, or do you think he's going to slide to maybe eighth or ninth or tenth pick in the draft? Where do you think Kyler Murray should go in this NFL draft? Um, hmm. It's tough because this isn't, this isn't as good as a quarterback class as I would like it to be. So where you're like, yeah, you should definitely take – Kyler Murray, number one, or even just, you know, Will Greer, number one, or Haskins, number one. None of these guys jump off the page. Now, that's not to say that none of these guys can't be Hall of Fame quarterbacks in the future. It's just right now they don't show the same kind of, like, sexiness that Cam Newton and Andrew Luck and and even Baker Mayfield showed. Now, I would put Kyler Murray in that same realm as Baker Mayfield, where if you took him number one, I wouldn't be mad at it. I would get it. It's the, all the things you mentioned. He's the athlete. He's a dual threat guy. I know a lot of people are, you know, shying away from dual threat athletes because they believe they get injured more than pocket passers do. And maybe there's some truth to that, but injuries happen. And I'd rather have an electric superstar quarterback with possibly getting injured 
than have another cookie cutter pocket passer who just never pans out at all. So I think I think he's worth a top ten pick. I'll tell you that right now, Loudbeard. I don't know if he's worth a number one overall pick, but if a team like the Giants, uh, like the Dolphins, like the Jaguars, any of those teams really looking for a new quarterback, I wouldn't be mad at them. And I'd say, hey, man, it's that could be a great pick for them, picking th- them as their quarterback with their first overall pick. Yeah, I, I agree with you on all fronts on that one. Um, it looks like a lot of the mock drafts have him going like 8 or 10. Um, the Giants have, I think, the sixth overall pick, so... They're, they're projected to pick up Dwayne Haskins, who should be the first quarterback taken in this draft. But if Kyler Murray starts getting some some momentum and he commits to the to the NFL, he may go earlier than that. We'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah, you know how mock drafts are. Yeah, they're just especially, especially if he goes to the combine and lights the world on fire there. We've seen guys move up on the draft board in the combine. Now, it's usually not quarterbacks, but it happens from time to time. Now, Loudbeard, I want us to... Um, Shift a little bit of gear, stay on the subject, but I think we need to help out Kyler Murray and his debt. It seems like he has a really bad PR person helping him out on these interviews, and I think the scout team, radio, PR team can really help him out. Now, Loudbeard, I want you to play the role of Dan Patrick, and I'll play the role of Kyler Murray being helped out by scout team PR. All right. So, um, Kyler Murray, are you going to go to the Combine this year? You know, Dan, that is an excellent question, and it's something me and my family have been weighing heavily. Um, We still have a tough decision to make. I'm still young, and, you know, this is a life-altering decision for me. I love baseball, and I love football, and the Oakland A's have been so great to me. And just right now, between me and my family, we're still praying on it. We're still thinking about what needs to be done, and um, we'll, we'll have that answer soon enough. All right. Well, are you going to be participating in your pro day, Kyler Murray? Yeah, you know, Dan, another great follow-up question, but I, I got to you know, say that it's the same answer as with the Combine. Um, hopefully in the near future, I, I'm not going to say hopefully, Dan, we will have a decision for you and, and the rest of the world to see what we're going to do. But right now, me and my family, we're still praying on it. We're still discussing it. We're trying to figure out what's best for me and my future. And that has to do with just injuries and and what my passion is and what my love is. And, and like I said, I love baseball and football the same, but you know, I'm still a young guy, 20, 20 years old, 21 years old, however old I am. I don't really know. I forget my birthday sometimes because that's how hard I am at making decisions. But, you know, Dan, I appreciate your questions. But right now, I, I just, you know, it's an I don't know, man. This is a tough decision. You've made tough decisions before, right, Dan? Remember when you had that decision of, whether or not you should stay at ESPN or start your own radio show. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, Dan? Uh, well, we ran out of time, but thank you for letting us know that you will be playing baseball. You heard it here first on the Dan Patrick <laughs> Show. You, thank you, you all sneaky, for listening sneaky, in. Sneaky, sneaky, sneakerson, Dan. End oh, scene. that end scene. All that Danny Patrick. <laughs> He's a trickster, all right. Man, how hard is that answer, L- Loudbeard? Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. And he was there. I mean, it was Super Bowl weekend. It's Media Row. He's going to you, do all these interviews. Like, you, you should know, have that stuff prepared. Right. You know that's going to be asked ad nauseum. So just have that staple answer ready, cookie cutter answer ready to go. And for the most part, that'll shut most guys down. Like, that's the end of the discussion. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that would be the perfect answer. And you could come up with that very easily. You don't have to be a PR sensation no. to know that, hey, we're working on that final decision here. We're it's a lot of a lot is going into it. My family and I were really sitting down and I'll have the answers for you soon. Man, and when That's you throw in say. prayer when you throw in prayer and God, then that really shuts things down. So, oh, hey, yeah, man, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm waiting for God to tell me yeah. what to do. Okay. God I and I are having a, a deep yeah. conversation and, and he's gonna show me the, the correct path. Exactly. Just wait for it. Well, Loudbeard, man, what a fun episode. It's over, man. I know, just like that. We got Kyler Murray and Anthony Davis talk. We didn't even talk about uh, Tom Brady and Julian Edelman partying at Disney right down the street from us. We should have gone and hung out with them yesterday. They had a good time today. The Patriots, Super Bowl champions, having their parade in Boston. So all those guys got to fly back and enjoy... I mean, it stinks having to be on a parade where everybody's cheering for you and you're just sitting there having a good old time. I mean, I feel really bad for all these Patriots yeah. players. I, I do feel like Tom Brady, especially now that he's 41, is just going to, like Wednesday, he's going to roll around and he's going to sleep until next Sunday. 
<laughs> I would. Cause, I'm cause telling you, you I'm think, not even that like, old, and I would. The second you get on the plane in Boston to fly to the Super Bowl, it is nothing but practice and media days and interviews and just – it's got to be one whirlwind of an experience where you get like little to no sleep. Yeah, you live off of adrenaline for like three days straight, and then I'm sure you crash. Absolutely yeah. crash. Old man Brady's crashing. You and I, Chris America, we're crashing. It's about that time. Yep. Let's uh, let's go ahead and sleep until, not till next Sunday, but let's go ahead and pass out until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Well, we'll see you on 12 Ounce Sports Radio, or you can download us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify podcast, or anywhere you can be. I think I lost connection. Thank you all for listening in. It's been a great show. Chris America, you sound like you're whispering. I can barely hear you in the background, but you're there somewhere. Technical difficulties, but that's okay. We're live. We bring it to you hot. Tune us in at 12 Ounce Sports Radio on the Barn Burner Network, on our podcast, anywhere you find us. Keep tuning in. Thank you all for listening.